Camera action. Our Hello. Little, our little Hi. Hi. We are hey. back from the stream of many eyes. Hooray. Yeah, Yay. It's been a while. So, um, welcome everybody, yes. and welcome to our uh, returning guest star, Travis. Thank you. Hi, hi everybody. Hi, hi. Travis. Thanks for coming back, Travis. Yeah, <laughs> it's no problem. Chris bagged me. Uh, yep. You know, it got yeah. got really gross, so I couldn't say no. <laughs> 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 Got to Gotta keep my battle buddy, man. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, that's right. You guys totally, totally, totally just. Ran roughshod over there was the bad guys. Sweet there fan was some art of it too. Very, yeah, quickly generated fan art that I really enjoyed. <laughs> so, uh, just to catch people up, the Waffle Crew is in Waterdeep and went to ChairCon, where they <laughs> met. This is, by the way, a local convention in Waterdeep held at a residence in the Sea Ward, one of the more upscale parts of town. And so they had to dress up and uh, make themselves presentable and leave many of their um, big weapons and things behind. Except now, me. Except Evelyn. And when they got there, they cornered Renair Never Ember, son of the ousted Lord of, open Lord of Waterdeep, Dagalt Never Ember. And Diath and Renair had a sort of sons against fathers moment. Uh, but you also encountered Renair's friend, uh, adventurer named Magnus who joined forces with the Waffle Crew when Chaircon came under attack by creatures boiling up out of its cellars, as well as uh, a, what appeared to be a betrayal by members of the Dung Sweepers Guild of the city who sort of locked the doors and sealed everybody inside. However, the party prevailed. Strix animated a piano that proceeded to tumble down a staircase, fell on top of Magnus, uh, but Magnus was able to heave it off of him and crush a bunch of bad guys underneath it. And Evelyn, using her um, paladin presence, all of her, all of her charm and uh, charisma, swayed the leader of the bad guys, a dwarf who's missing one of his arms and has a crossbow attached to the stump, was able to sway him over to the Waffle Crew's side. At the end of the session, assassins or thieves of the, of the Zentarum sent to kidnap Renair during the distraction were themselves defeated. One of them tried to slip away on a zip line to an awaiting coach, but the waffle crew leapt out after him, intercepted him, and captured him alive. That's where we pick things up. So you guys have boiled out of this mansion and uh, are kind of out on the street or running rapidly toward the coach where this guy has been apprehended by, I believe it was Diaz who first? Uh, he, he had like zip lined down That's and right. then it was Magnus jumping through a window, yep. Evelyn flying at him, yep. Strix misty stepping. Yep. Uh, Diaz did something cool too. Right, Paulton, <laughs> Paul, Paulton sauntered out through the front door, flask yeah. in hand, um, in no particular rush. Uh, you see uh, uh, Warrington Munt filling the doorway behind him yep. and several other people pouring out of the residence in terror. Uh, but nobody really paying attention, other than you guys, nobody really paying attention to the coach parked on this side street. Uh, the fellow that you've apprehended is dressed in black leather armor. He has a scar um, from his lower lip down to the uh, cusp of his chin and He's got these sort of uh, bloodshot, dark, shifty eyes, uh, and he he seems absolutely panicked at having been captured. How many of those eyes does he have? He has two of them currently. That's standard the, standard yeah. amount. Yes. Uh, you can see that uh, the coach isn't going anywhere at the moment because he didn't get a chance to sort of mount up and take the reins, so the horses are just waiting in the street. You can see d uh, members of the Dung Sweepers Guild scattering among the various other masses fleeing the building. <laughs> All right. So it, was, I... he, was he inside the coach or just he ready didn't, on He top? didn't make it um, oh, okay. to the driver's seat um, before he was pulled down and apprehended by you. Great. Okay. Could I try and uh, hold person on one of those Dung Sweepers that are fleeing? Sure. 
Um, What's the save? She holds person, 16. I get real nervous. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, yes. I'm real sorry. You cast the spell and you freeze one of them in place. All right. Oh, um, excellent. I got one. Well done, Strix. Right. Got... Cool. <laughs> now, you know um, it'll I'm... only be a matter of time before the city watch shows up. Probably not long. I would like to set the horses free from the carriage. Oh. Okay. You untie the horses, they bolt down the street once you smack them on the butt. Be okay. free, my friends! <laughs> tell our story! <laughs> they gallop off. <laughs> and never tell your story. Right. <laughs> oh, I know! I was hoping Come they would on. rejoin their herd and like, make a statue to us. Oh, that sounds nice. Uh, Dieth would like to talk to very sternly with this uh, supposed assassin. Um, and I'm going to request the assistance of Paltin in this. Oh. So, uh, Evelyn, if yeah. you could, mm -hmm. give her to the one that Strix froze and make sure that doesn't go anywhere and get ready to, because we have some questions for them too. She goes over and stands. Hold them with your strong arms. Mm -hmm. Isn't it, aren't they, aren't they already hailed? Well, they can't do it forever. I mean. She just kind of like gently embraces them. <laughs> <laughs> Just let them know we mean business. She pats him on the shoulder. <laughs> we mean business. <laughs> so, uh, so with Paulton here, uh, DS will then start talking to the supposed assassin, mm -hmm. and just be like, "Hey, buddy, what was all that about?" Paulton's like, "I'm not saying a word." Paulton just smacks him in the face. <laughs> 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 oh, it's the buddy cop again. Oh, no. Paul's like, sorry, I like just got here. I assume that's what we're doing, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Sorry. Hey, also, hi. Uh, nice, nice to meet you. Then, yeah. <laughs> uh, you sort of send him rocking. His head kind of bangs off the side of the cab. Mm -hmm. Death will kind of like uh, again after Paulton slaps him up a bit. It'll just be like, yeah, and that's the gentlest thing that my friend here can do to you. Yeah, so, man. It's going to get rough. I mean, unless you're into it, in which case, you know, we can get gentler. I don't know. Whatever sinks your sub, man. Carry on. Why were you after Rainer? Make an intimidate check with advantage. Ooh, okay. Advantage is fine. Yay! Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Strix is like, do you need help with that? <laughs> All right, so with advantage? Yeah. Eight. Okay. Oh, um, Dieth is scary. He's and, a nice boy. Oh. He says, I'm not afraid of you, you scrawny little runt. Uh, he's not wrong. Um, <laughs> Magnus, I want to try to friend. tip over the carriage. <laughs> <laughs> Make a strength check. <laughs> athletics. Athletics. Uh, athletics check. That is a 19. Okay. <laughs> over it goes. Um, so Some people it's, flip tables. Yep. As soon as he do that does that, DS with like not even looking at it, just maintaining eye contact with his ass and just says, oh, I'm not the one you should be scared of. I'm actually trying to protect you. Uh, okay. I am your safety net. And you don't want to have to, you don't have to lose me. We think he might know the location of the Stone of Gold. <laughs> he just tells him. <laughs> okay. The Stone of Golor is an artifact that contains knowledge about the location of the Vault of Dragons, where his father, pointing at Rainier, hid half a million gold pieces. Like, Paul just is like... <laughs> <laughs> Go on. The stone knows where the Vault of Dragons is, and he knows where the stone is. I'm sure of it. The, the stone knows. Yes. It's an intelligent item or artifact or something. It's about this big. And you, and you talk it. to this thing. Yes. His father put the knowledge of the vault in the stone. Some wizard helped him create it. Paul turns to the other. He's like, what's he talking about? Talking stone. This guy is 
I, don't, I, I think he's out of his mind. No, it's real. It's a talking stone, damn it. Of course, yes. <laughs> there, oh, it's, it probably talks a lot. Uh, it's fucking nuts, man. DF actually takes this and kind of plays along with Paulton, whether Paulton is being genuine or not. DF just like, oh, yeah, okay, a talking stone. Sure, a wizard man. made it to hold the knowledge <laughs> yep. so that yep. it would magic, be all secret. Yeah, magic mm -hmm. did it. Okay. And if but you have yeah. the stone and then you lose it, you also lose the knowledge. It takes the knowledge out of you after it's given to you. That's why you oh. need this. Did of I hear magic? Course. Of course. <laughs> like yelling from me. Like, yeah, we're talking about magic stones that talk and have knowledge. It's... It's all true. Can I arcana check that? <laughs> As Paulton yells at me. Um, you have nothing really to arcana check. Uh, oh, he's just... Okay, fine. Never mind. That's totally possible! <laughs> well, then how about this? Who sent you? He says, I work for the Zentarim. That's all you need to know. Uh, does he have any visible markings of the Zentarum tattooed on him, like I've seen on other people, or the rings? Or uh, You can see he's got a signet ring with the Zentarum symbol on it, on his right hand. And it seems legit. Middle finger. It looks like a, it looks like a legit ring, yeah. Is that bad? Just confusing. Okay. In the meantime, Evelyn is having a, a quiet and meaningful come to Lathander conversation with the person she's holding. Strix does not tell her that they can't hear her. <laughs> she's just whispering sweet Lathanders in his ear. Uh, you can, that dwarf with the, um, the armature. Mm -hmm. well, you can see he doesn't like this guy that your friends are interrogating at all, and he looks like he's ready to pierce him full of crossbow bolts. Mm, interesting. Is is he hanging around me? Yeah, in the general vicinity. And he's sort of looking all around him very suspiciously, like he's he's expecting the city watch to show up any minute, and he's afraid he's going to get arrested, and he doesn't want, he wants to run away, but at the same time, he doesn't want to leave your presence. Remember that the morning lord shines down in all of his mercy and protects us, and we don't need to worry about a single thing. He just takes in some air and goes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, You deception. know, I didn't catch your name. He says, Nasca. Right, Nasca. I think I did catch that, but I forgot because it's been like way too many weeks since I played D&D &D, and that's just really <laughs> horrible. Are you um, sure it's safe out here in the open on the street? Well, if you really think about it, what can anyone do to us when the light of the morning lord shines down upon us? A much lot. happier when we get underground. Ugh, I want this conversation to stop, so I undo the whole person. I'm like, grab him hard, Evelyn. <laughs> okay, you got him. yeah, you've got this dung sweeper who's basically rigid. All right, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna walk up or I'm gonna look at the dung sweeper and be like, Hey, Cutter, why'd you lock us in there? You're supposed to be picking up trash. I don't care. <laughs> the whole person is undone. Stop. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Then I'm intimidating him. Oh, okay. Um, Evelyn's just holding them by the shoulders and like showing them to Strix like this, letting her talk. And that's a 21 to intimidate. Oh. Um, yeah, uh, it seems fairly intimidated uh, and says, uh, tells you to ask the dwarf. Uh, I look down at the dwarf and I'm like, Tell Lathander what you did. <laughs> uh, the dwarf shoots the dung sweeper guild. <gasps> yes, Ka! And uh, <laughs> pretty sure that's not what Lathander would want you to do. And no, uh, through the right through the chest. <laughs> Uh, the, the dies in your arms. Evelyn. No, can I lay on hands really quick? I have hands on them. Dies in your arms. <laughs> 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 and then almost immediately, uh, you see a... Cr uh, it goes limp uh, in your arms. Eyes roll back into this Dung Sweeper Guild member's head and uh, clearly, clearly expired from the wound. Um, and almost instantly, all of you see phasing onto the cobblestone street 
about five feet away from the corpse, is a creature that looks like. Do 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 do. Oh no. Do 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 do. A oh. brain with legs. Uh, uh, a huh. brain with legs. Yeah. You know, some people like to call me a brain with legs. <laughs> <laughs> one of those guys. So yeah. So one of these guys. All right. It looks like a human right. brain, purplish brain with these ghastly, ghastly legs. And as it phases into existence, I'd like everybody oh. to make initiative rolls. Do we, any of us, recognize those? That is a good question. Um, let's roll initiative first, and then we'll see. I rolled a 12. Well, I 12, got a 12 for Magnus. 12. Did you also get a 12, Evelyn? No, oh. I got a 16. 16. I also got 16. 16. Strix. I got an eight. I'm using my friendship Halton. and magic dice you got me, Chris. They're good ones. Oh, good. Oh, good. Twelve. Twelve. All right. And Warrington rolls a seven. And right. Uh, what's his face? Nasca rolls a fourteen. Uh, yeah. And so as soon as this creature appears, Nasca says, "That is an intellect devourer." Bummer. <laughs> uh, and it is Dieth's turn. Dieth, what do you do? Uh, oh, never mind. It's the Intellect of Hours' turn. No. What does the Great. Intellect of Hours ah, do? Not my intellect. Hmm. I'm not that worried about it. <laughs> it will target one creature that it can see within 10 feet of it that has a brain. Let's see. Um, a whole bunch of brains here. Uh, so we'll roll randomly. Okay, that will be interesting. Unexpected, maybe. Uh, uh, saving throw Simon, coming. Big Simon. Big Simon. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so Warrington Munt grips <laughs> his head uh, in pain and says, Blimey, I'm being assailed! And uh, Is he so close enough to me that my aura does anything for him? Oh, you know what? That would be, that would certainly come into yeah. play. Uh, so you add a plus five, right? Yeah. Okay. He says the exact same thing and takes 11 psychic damage. Oh, Warrington. <laughs> and I have to roll a 3d6. This is how much intelligence he loses. Oh, boy. Loses? Yeah, loses. We can't like afford Germany? to lose any intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so yes, he grabs his cranium and a uh, horrible, horrible um, cry in pain, and you see he just sort of kind of starts to stagger around. And he appears to be stunned at the moment. And then it is <sighs> Diaz's turn. Uh... Kill it! Kill it! Uh, all right. So, with all this crazy nonsense, DF not wanting to lose his uh, captive, mm -hmm. uh, pull out gutter and kind of use it to threaten him with. Just kind of have it, Adam, just be like, "You're not going in there." And then we'll take uh, the dagger from the front of his belt and then throw it at the intellect of our work. Okay. The cool one. The cool one, yes. All right. Make your attack roll. Uh, still pretty good. 18. That is a hit. Great. Uh, and that'll just do a whopping six points of damage. All right. So you stick it. Um, did you want to recall your dagger? Uh, nope, I'll keep it in there for now. All right. Yeah, so it embeds in his brainy body. Oh, I don't, I don't have gutter. That's right. I left behind before we showed up here. Oh, that's right. Yes, because you don't okay, want to take so, it to the Okay, so, so that, uh, Dagger throws the intellect of our, uh, reforms it into his hand and points it back at his captive. Okay. Yep. Evelyn, what do you do at almost the exact same moment Diath attacks this thing with his dagger? I am going to just let go of this now dead corpse. Yep. It and, slumps to the ground with a splat. And I'm going to meaningfully look at Magnus as I ignite my, my heart of Spinelli. <laughs> and I'm like, you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
And she goes <laughs> goes for, to attack it. All right. It, uh, it tries to she, hop around to stay out of striking range of you, but that's easier said than done. Go yeah, I, ooh, I only roll an 11. That is a miss. Oops. Okay. Uh, I go again. Okay. <laughs> I only roll a 12. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, that is a <laughs> hit. It is? A hit on Phew. a 12. Okay, good. Evelyn was going to be very chagrined. Okay. Um, especially after making a big yeah. deal out of being battle buddies. Yep. Uh, let's see. Eight, six, 14, 18. Okay. Uh, so you just turn it into a flaming pile of crap. <laughs> nice. <laughs> there Guess is. brains isn't everything. <laughs> I mean, wait. <laughs> so it's dead now? Uh, yeah, you sort of kick it with your foot, Magnus. And I it, was so ready to chop it. <laughs> and I helped. And it, oh, man. And it twitches a little bit, uh, but you know it's dead. You, you know that this brain... Magnus <laughs> looks around for other things to attack. <laughs> uh, well, let's see. There's the guy that DF is holding at knife point, the Zentarum kidnapper that uh, you captured and have been interrogating. Uh, there's also the dwarf with the... The missing member. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say uh, I do attack the dwarf, but I'm not going to use my super powerful sword. Um, I have a gauntlet called Phantom Fist that lets me push people around if I hit them. So okay, I great. Ooh. Maybe beat him up a little. Yeah, yeah. so that's uh, 24. Oh, yeah, you pound on him. Uh, it's only 1d4 plus 4, so only 5 points of damage, okay. and I'm going to kind of push him backwards, you know, yeah. not far, 5 feet. Yeah. Just enough to be like, and there's more of that. Okay. <laughs> be, be more attacks if I chose to. Uh, so this is like a like a right hook, a left cross, an uppercut kind of. Yeah, I'm kind of. Let's go with uppercut. Oh, yeah. I'm really trying to. Le I'm leveling him. Yeah, yeah. You basically launch him off his feet, and he goes stumbling backward and lands on his butt. Uh, and you can already see the big welt forming on his head um, from the smashing phantom fist. All right, and the rest of you see this dwarf knocked off his feet. And he sort of snarls, and then he looks up at Evelyn plaintively, like, <gasps> <laughs> Nasca, sometimes we have to face the consequences of our actions, even though the Morning Lord forgives us. <sighs> he, he wrestles with that moral conundrum mm -hmm. um, for a moment, uh, giving Paulton a chance to act, should he wish to. So, like... Right after, like the the brain thing dies, there's like a there's like a knife in him, and then Evelyn comes in and just like slaughters it to mush, and he just looks at it, he's like, "Yeah, I think y'all got it." <laughs> and then, uh, so what's uh, so what's around? What am I? What, so what there's I, there's an over. There, you're on a a cobblestone street in sort of one of the wealthier parts of the city where all these sort of big ivy-covered manors are staring down at you with blank, vapid windows. And uh, there are people who have scattered through the streets. You can hear whistles of the city watch converging on the house and your location. There's mm -hmm. an overturned carriage next to you, free of horses, um, who have gone on to better lives. And... <laughs> Uh, a dwarf on his butt and a hippo man staggering around making the Oh no! Mm. Poor hippo man. Um, I like ask the party. I'm like, so the dwarf? Are we? Are we? Are we fighting him? Is that what? Is that what we're doing? I, don't uh, I think he's been punished uh, enough. Instructions oh, unclear. What? I appear to have forgotten how to walk in a straight line. It's all right. You're doing great. We all believe in you. You're killing it. Left, right, left, right, right. It's all, it's all right, dude. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> Ask him why he did that. Make him tell us the truth. What's going on? Uh, okay, cool. I will approach the dwarf and t give, give him a good chatting. Okay. Um, at this point, uh, what do you want to say to him? I like kind of, kinda... he's still like knocked down, right? Yeah. So you can just kind of kneel down or crouch down beside him. I just kind of, uh, I like squat down and look at him and just kind of, 
<laughs> so what's your deal, man? What's going on? <laughs> he says, I am an enforcer in the Xanathar Guild. I work for the Beholder. We are <gasps> enemies of the Zentarum. I would see them all destroyed and rid the city of their presence forever. Okay. This city isn't big enough for the two of us. But for you and me, it's all right. It's me and him. <laughs> That's fair. Like, we can, we physically fit here now, so I, I understand yes. what you're getting at. So yeah. is he one of the good group? Which one's the good group and which one's the bad group? We're bad both. is there is. There's no good group here. Like, yeah, I'm okay. still a little unclear. Yeah, all right, cool. Rene will just say that uh, the, the Xanathar Guild although it operates underneath the city, is not welcome in Waterdeep. Thieves' guilds are not allowed, generally speaking, and this is basically a criminal organization um, that's been allowed to persist below the city. They're all terrible, horrible monsters. The, Zen the Zentarum, while they present themselves as legitimate business um, and have solidified a hold in the city, they, too, are just as reprehensible in a lot of ways. He has no high opinions for either of these organizations and would love Waterdeep to be rid of them both. And if either of them gets the Stone of Golor, that's bad. And he says to you, Paulton, and to you, DF, and I do not know where the Stone of Golor is, and I do not know what my father intended to do with it after he left the city, cowardly shit that he is. I believe him. Can I, uh, quick, quick question. Um, the guy by the carriage said something about it taking the knowledge away. Rainier, is it possible you did know at some point? Well, if this person isn't lying to us, then yes, it is possible that I have had the stone in my possession and merely forgotten about it. But there would be no way of him knowing if it took his, that knowledge away from him. Correct. If you believe, if you believe this piece of shit. Uh, I want to turn back to Zentarum assassin motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, and just be like, do you know who I am, who we are? No. Do the names Davil or Yagra mean anything to you? Oh, shit. Yes. You stupid idiot. Does the name Magnus mean? I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out. History check. <laughs> Magnus. Magnus. I travel with a wizard named oh, Taco. No. You have a wizard? Yeah. I do. <laughs> Can I know magic? <laughs> yeah, they're That's pretty right. good at it. They also are very good at cooking. <laughs> We'd be best friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You killed the black spider. That's, yeah, I did do that. <laughs> both, the, both the guy and his actual big black spider. I did do both of those things. What the hell is going on right now? <laughs> Don't worry about it. We'll yeah. talk. I think, I think he's a real hero versus us. Wait, really? I've done some stuff. I did, I saved a plane at least. I think a bunch of other ones I didn't follow up. But What's that like being a hero? Paulton, it's that, nice. The, 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 a lot of endorsement deals. <laughs> pa uh, Paulton, the dwarf tries deals? to get you to help him get yeah. off the ground while all this is going on. I also opened a dog <laughs> training school. I, I, I'm just like, yeah, this is, I know, this is a lot. This happens, I guess. Uh, and then uh, once, he, once you help him up, he just sort of pushes you aside and goes over to Evelyn because you're in his way. Um, and then he comes over to you, Evil, and he says, I killed that man to make a point. There's a creature in this city that is infesting members of the Dung Sweepers Guild with those creatures that you just killed. So you killed that innocent person because they were infested by another creature? Yes. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you say it like that. <laughs> to was be he, fair, he made that his point. wrong? What, what point were you trying to make? He cleaned up shit for a living. I did him a favor. Point? I mean, well, I dude, do that. Don't, ba don't bash his job, man. He's just trying to get by. Hey, I'm trying I... to have a conversation with her. Shut up. <laughs> now, now. I mean. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> he, like leans in. he like leans in. You done fucked up now, son. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Nasca, I know you're. You're turning over a new leaf. The world is very confusing and it's hard to know right from wrong. And I'm not one to tell you what's right from wrong. I'm just trying to You're understand. Right. He's wrong. Oh, okay. Well, thank, well. thank you. <laughs> but uh, 
I'm not sure I'm clear on what point you were trying to make other than just to show us that that person was infected, in which case you could have maybe just said, hey, Evelyn, new friend, servant of Lathander, guess what? That person's infested by someone that's making them do bad things. Okay, shut up for a minute. I throw a rock You're at You're great. Ow. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> okay, you and me. He turns, he turns to you, Paulton, and just starts <laughs> doing this to you with his one arm. You and me, right now. now not, but, he sort of stands not, in front of you protectively, Noska, like he's protecting you from Paulton. Me? Yeah. <laughs> she laughs. <laughs> She's like, it's so cute. Paulton also laughs. It's adorable. <laughs> Everyone Paulton manners. Remember manners. <laughs> Um, so while this is going on, you can actually see coming down the street a big swath of city watchmen. Oh, thank God. Good. Um, they're going to take them they're, away. They're, they're about 30 seconds um, from reaching your position, and Noska says, turns back to you, Evelyn, and says, there was nothing that could be done. His brain was eaten by that creature. He was already dead. He was just a, a meat puppet. There was oh, no was way to save him. And if you, don't want, if you don't want other people in the city becoming like him, then maybe you should kill the creature who made him. Who's that? And I'll help you. Its name is Nihilur. It's a mind Nihilur. flayer. Oh! A <gasps> mind flayer? <laughs> oh, my. And you'll help us? I'll help you. Of course. I know where it lives. It starts, okay. It like, vomits a little. <laughs> I don't like mind flayers, and I don't like people being possessed. You I don't see think him that's very load nice his crossbow and kind of stare at the city watch, and he says, "I'm wanted." We By all who? want you. No, we don't I mean want they're you going to... to arrest me. Well, I I'm, think I won't be... probably take care of that. Tom's I won't just be like, taken what? alive. You're unarmed. Oh, he says, "I'm, I'm armed. always armed." <laughs> I guess it depends I, I on your this. definition. So you see Nasca sort of standing, planting his feet as though ready to basically unload on the approaching city watchman. Now, I know you've maybe been in a place where violence solves everything for a long time, but trust us. The Centaurum guy's like, yeah, I'm wanted too, so let's get this taken care of. You know, uh, we clearly made a mistake. You know Davil and Yagra. If you're working for them, well, yeah, I'm sorry. This was all a misunderstanding. Just no shooting guards, okay? Can we all agree? No more shooting, no more stabbing. Let's all just talk. Um, so here, is there any kind of like sewer system or something we can escape into? Yeah, Noska tells you that there are sewers all over the city uh, and sewer access points here, ev there, everywhere. He actually knows where the closest sewer grate is. Should uh, we? Magnus, we don't need to escape. We've done nothing wrong. And I have a lot of parking tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. She kind of like burnishes her like chest plate, you know, she kind of like rolls her shoulders back and she's like, hello, protectors of Waterdeep. And just goes to meet them and talk to them. <laughs> she goes walking out toward this wave yeah. of guards uh, approaching. No. And Strix is like, that'll be fine. Dieth will turn over to Raynor. It's like, uh, I'm, I'm sure you can vouch for exactly that everything that's happened here. Like, you know, we're just, yeah, you, you, you can vouch for us. You know what's going on. I'm sure you, as a noble, you'll have some sway with the city guard. Um, he, he looks at you knowingly. Uh, you can see a lot of things racing through his head right now. Um, he's taking in your words. He's looking at the, the corpse lying on the <coughs> ground, uh, bleeding out, the burning wreckage of the intellect devourer, the dwarf criminal, the Zentarum criminal, and he sort of sucks in some air and hears your words and nods and um, will sort of follow Evelyn toward the guards. Great. Uh, Diaz will then turn back yeah, to the Zentarum agent uh, and just be like, you have seconds to escape. He nods at you and darts away. Uh, and then he'll turn over back towards Nazca and just be like, this one's your call. He, uh, Nazca says, I'm with her. 
All right. Uh, Evelyn, as great. you approach this, way, this uh, the, all of these guards, and there's a dozen of them approaching you from this direction alone, you can see that there is a sergeant who appears to be a female half-orc um, leading a company of impeccably dressed city watch officers, male and female, of various races, human, dwarf, halfling, and her. Evelyn approaches like the, uh, like the boss. Like she, yeah. she walks up and she's like, I'm so glad you're here. I am very concerned because I have heard of a scourge affecting the city and that is these monsters. Do you see that mess of brain matter? I just had to kill that because apparently these are infesting all of your citizens. Did you know? <laughs> Make a persuasion check. <laughs> Strix is behind her, by the way, dragging the body away. <laughs> <laughs> like, where? <laughs> like just, just, like, to the side of the street. Oh, okay. She's just, like, lost it, and she's just, like, blacked out, and is just oh, dragging no. the body away. Like, okay. gotta get the body! Gotta get the bodies out of the street! <laughs> it's her old sigil habits. Do I have <laughs> advantage, because Lathander? No, but you have advantage <laughs> You have advantage unknowingly, because Rainier Neverember sort of crept up behind you. Um, okay. And his presence lends Oh, that's much better. Lends 23. Credence. All right. Um, she asks, she says to you, would you mind if we take a full deposition from you and your companions? Well, we don't have much time because we are on a mission of the Morning Lord, but I'm certainly happy to help you with anything that you might need. And uh, she says... How about you, Lord Never Ember? Do you have anything to add? And he says, I think I can probably resolve this for everybody if they have to be on their way. And she says, that will suffice. That's so very kind. Thank you. You are doing such great work protecting this great city, and I am so honored to have been of any service. Uh, you can see that they, the watchmen don't hold you up any further, Evelyn. She blows them a kiss and walks back to her party. All right. Okay, where are we going? <laughs> Has Evelyn ever run for political office? <laughs> <laughs> Evelyn, this is the first time this has probably even been mentioned to you. Uh, oh, you... <laughs> office? I, I could... I could never... I, you think so? Oh, yeah. Well... I know a couple mayors, I think, at this point, And you're way better at, you know talking than they are. I think you can totally do it. <laughs> this can only go to good places. <laughs> Trix walks up with like blood on her hands and she's like, I moved the body, but I don't know where to wipe the blood. And then Evelyn... put on my clothes and she just like rubs it on her like nice robe and she's like, there. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Evelyn that's kind of like points to that and she's like, I don't know. I've kind of had a chance at the, the I don't know, the political or the uh, whatever you call that kind of life. And I kind of prefer this one. Strix, Strix, you know that you can press the digitate that blood away. Of course she does. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> After smearing it all over her dress. Uh-huh. Oh. Evelyn just kind of smiles lovingly at that and is like affirmed that she made the right life choices. So you just talked to them and they're going to let us all go? Even me? Well, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Diet will actually approach Rainer at this point. Uh, yeah, you can see he's having a conversation. He's just relaying everything that he saw, witnessed inside the um, mansion, omitting any real yeah. business with you. Yeah, uh, Diet is a bit apprehensive of the guards, kind of maintains his distance. But yeah. whenever that discussion is over, um, he'll pretty much just let Rainer know that um, Diet feels that you know, they have more business together, whether professional or personal, that we could uh, yep. love to talk about more sometime, and that potentially more people could come after Rainer. And should he need assistance, this is how he can find me and try to, like, relay information to him to uh, wherever Dieth likes to stay. And Where does Dieth like to stay? You know, around... Uh, Do we live in the Yawning Portal? Uh... I mean, we stay near there. We, we stay at the spire, or we used to stay at the spire. Back in the, the day, you stayed at the spire, but you haven't been there in a long time. Um, yeah. You haven't even checked in there, Evelyn. They don't even know that you're in the city. Uh, nope. Death and Strix had like a, like a shed or a hovel that they that's stayed in. That's probably not around all anymore. This, so. Yeah, there's no way that's going to be good. 
that doesn't have an address. <laughs> yeah. You guys can stay with me so, at the Holiday Inn if you wanted. <laughs> you do have, I mean, you've been to the Awning Portal. You do know that they have rooms there. You could just say that's a, as, as a place. Potentially. Yeah. I would say just leave a message uh, at the Yawning Portal. Okay. He tells we'll you. Check in he from goes, time to time. He goes to the Yawning Portal fairly frequently. He's got a friend named Floon that he drinks with there from time to Excellent. time. Excellent. And then should we ever cross paths again or need each other's assistance then? Yeah. To. He says, I'll come looking for you shortly. Right, great. And then do you just kind of give him like a hand across onto his shoulder mm -hmm. and just be like, uh, we're more alike than you could ever know. Stay safe. Okay. As you walk away back, Dieth, you can see some other guards who have visited the mansion and sort of checking it out are reporting to um, the, the sergeant that it looks like there was an incursion that came up out of the old cellars underneath the house. Goblins, bugbears, um, that kind of thing. None of the monsters seem to have survived in any way, shape, or form. Uh, it doesn't look like any of the patrons got hurt or any of the staff got hurt. Looks like it was all on the bad guys. Hmm. All right, great. And none of the chairs were seriously damaged. <laughs> Thank oh. God. Yeah. <laughs> They're kind of saved. Thank God. <sighs> yeah. Um, I do hope badge members got reimbursed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can Strix go? I'm, I'm going to go up to Magnus and be like, hey, uh, Magnus, um, didn't, did you say that you 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 traveled with someone that looked like Dieth before? I uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not really good with this kind of thing. My memory's pretty spotty. Um, I had like a century's worth of memory stolen. <laughs> and I'm oh, still that's working fair. on getting those back. I lived uh, for fifty years in a swamp and bathed in goat blood. Really? Uh huh. You have so much. Enjoyment. I was in a mannequin for a while. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. Yeah. Don't you hate that? A, a warlock generated a new body of mine. Oh. And yeah, it, but it was great because I got my eye back. Or was it? What was wrong? Something. I got. I healed. It was yeah. great. Yeah, I'm uh, okay. I'm like 85. What? I'm like 140. <laughs> what? That's crazy. What? what? I'm like bored. Can we carry on? <laughs> yeah, sure enough. Uh, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember that name at all? Oh, I, I remember it. It was something because uh, I carpentry carving. This Car uh, this big Ooh, hippo man taps you on the shoulder, Magnus, and says, "My dear sir, are we friends? Perhaps I don't oh, seem God. to remember who can you I, are." Can I try to heal him? Uh, what do you do? What do you try on him? Like lay, on lay on hands. hands? Uh, how much do you want to lay on hands for? Just 10 to see what happens. Okay. It doesn't seem to have any uh, visible impact. Uh, he seems quite confused and confounded, I say. You know, we've never met before now, but I'm always open to friendship. Yes. Have you always been with them? Seems like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I've traveled quite a bit. Uh, I'm just here now. Taking in the sights. And he look kind of guiltily pats him. And she looks at everyone. She's like, I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm going to, I like. It, is this like a frying pan thing you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> I like oh, walking. Yeah. I can turn my staff into one of those. I'll turn it into a frying pan. You think that'll help? <laughs> well, no, we're not hitting him. <laughs> Paulton? Oh. I'm going to go up to Warrington and just like look at him. Do you remember me? He says, what kind of silly question is that, Pippin? Of Aww. course I remember you. Wow, he's so far gone. <laughs> <laughs> Poor man, he'll never be the same. Um, would Guess I we know should leave that, him here. Would I know that he needs a restoration spell or like a temple spell? Or should I arcana uh, check? You can make an arcana check just to... Because yeah. Holly knows that. Yeah. I don't know if Strix knows it. Uh, 15. Yeah, you think uh, a restoration spell can restore his lost intelligence. You also think, um, well, let me see. Let me just double check something. But that's the, that's the quickest surefire way, yeah. And I believe it's a greater restoration is needed. I, th I think it is as well, Yeah. which would be uh, only something we can do mm -hmm. at the spires yes. of the morning. <laughs> Unfortunately. Indeed. All right, so Strix will relay and be like, hey, so he needs, like, bigger magic than any of us can do. So, like, we need to go to uh, 
we need to go to the spires probably i'm they, i know i don't i didn't like living there either but i it's just i didn't say i didn't like living there I you're giving me that look evelyn what look i wasn't I, it's fine to go every there. time we say something about it you're like Hook it. oh i i am i mean we also have a mind flare that is for some reason trying to take over the dung sweeper guild for all we know could be an agent of either the xenathar or Zentarum, and it's placing agents all around the city yes we use them as spies for the xenathar guild oh it's okay so you just admitted it there is yeah. <laughs> well yes <laughs> they often come down to the sewers so they make easy targets to capture i've so captured several them, personally all of them are xanathar agents no it takes a while to breed these creatures, but whenever we get a new batch, we try to find captives to put them in. Not always dung sweeper guild members, other people too. Hello. Is there any way to identify someone who has been infested with one of them? Says Nihil or keeps a list. Cool. And now you say batch. Yeah, these things are grown in vats out of brains that have been surgically removed from other creatures by the Mind Flayer and transformed into these monsters. Ew! Gross, okay. No, come on, I was grown in a vat, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Gross, okay. Uh, okay, um, well, maybe, not that I don't want to go there, but maybe we should ask someone to take Warrington to the Spires, and then we should deal... I have fought Mind Flayers! Very brittle spines! Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, I think we need to help him with his problem, but... Uh, can you fight Warrington? Of course! Oh, see, it doesn't matter. He can fight. We'll just take him along. I think he's better than... <laughs> I'm, I'm trained in seven martial arts. See? Do you do you feel okay, Warrington? I feel a little out of sorts. Do you do you want to f to get some medical attention, or do you want to fight mind flayers and rip their spines out? He says that is always a jolly good pastime. Game if you are. Good enough for me. The headache All is right. a little crashing, but what can you do? Great, Nasca. Where can we find this Nihiler guy? He says um, that there is a sewer complex or a sewer nexus um, in the dock ward, which he can take you to, lead you down into, and therein you will find the creature. Should we like prepare a little bit? Like maybe, like maybe some like potions of not. He Being says he says that there's a, a the access aluminum foil hats maybe the the access point is under a shop called the old Zoblob shop. Oh, I've been there. The Zoblob shop. The Zoblob shop. And Dieth, you you know that it is a curiosity shop in the dock ward, so, uh, sort of uh, near an intersection, at the end of Candle Lane and. Uh, it's a dark part of the neighborhood, and the most distinctive thing about it, it's got a stuffed beholder in the window. Yep. And it's currently run oh, by a gnome. Is his name Bob Zoblob? His name is, Zo he calls himself Zoblob. His but real not, name? Tony. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you don't think Zoblob is his given name? No. Yeah. Nobody has uh, that name. So Dieth will say, Nasca, you do understand that we have to stop this. Of course, yeah. But I'm with you now. I've seen right. the, I've seen the light. Mm-hmm. Of Lathander. Yeah. <laughs> and what a light. <laughs> all right, good enough for me. Do you all need to go grab the rest of your equipment or are you ready yes. to go? Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. we do. Yeah, right. We'll, yeah, you we'll left that at the that. yawning portal. We should find some potions of like, I don't know, like mind shielding or something. If this is brain stuff, just saying. Strix well, is if you all stay close to me, it'll be a little bit better. I do it's recall really that mind flayers have some ability to project their psionic thoughts. I don't remember how they do it exactly. Oh, damn it. 
that. Can oh. I Arcana check that baby and guess? Sure. All right. Uh, that's a dirty 20. Oh, great. Yeah, you know that they all mind flares can basically project a cone of psychic energy that blasts and stuns you into oblivion. It tears your mind to shrapnel, basically. Yeah. Uh, they, and yeah, that's bad. Yes. They also, of course, w while you're stunned and reeling from the effect, <laughs> use their tentacles to pry open your skull and suck out your brains. <laughs> starts, just starts crying for no reason. <laughs> we definitely need some potions before we do this. Maybe there, some sort of construct that doesn't have a brain. Is there a range to the mind flare? Yeah, you know that it, it typically... This blast that it emits, I think, extends out about 60 feet in a very broad cone, so it can get a lot of people at once. Cool. Yeah, That's exactly right. <laughs> Extracting brains. They also have the ability to detect thoughts and to dominate creatures with magic. Ooh, fun. Well, so they can bend the wills of their enemies and use them as pawns against their allies. So weak-minded creatures, beware. Eh, I can do that. So this is like boss fight. <laughs> it's it's mind flayers or butch. Are we doing this? But the potions for something. So <laughs> we probably should have Warrington at full. Capacity. First things first, let's go retrieve our stuff. Uh, maybe take a moment to get a short rest or a long one if you need it. Let's get a, let's take more. Maybe Warrington will get better after he sleeps. Well, how long does the, does the ritual take? I could take him while you guys retrieve your stuff. Oh yeah, that's true. That's but, a great no. idea. You can visit the spires. It's a lovely place. Evelyn doesn't have to go with you and be weird. I have been looking forward to visiting the spires. I've heard great things. It's in all the travel. It's not that I don't want to go there. I always want to go there, obviously. Uh-huh. So, but it's just that, very kind of you, Magnus. That, that sounds good. Yes, we should definitely split up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just for... We're just going to rest, make sure we're all ready, get some food in our bellies, take a moment to recollect and consider all of our options, and then we'll figure it out from there. Magnus, you just want to meet us later? Yeah, that sounds great. And then Magnus says, in Thieves' Cant, to the, uh, uh -huh. um, it's just possible, I'm suspecting now, that maybe Warrington might have been dominated, and if he attacks me, I'm going to kill him. Do you, do you have the Thieves' Cant back? You do you, man. Okay, cool. <laughs> Just make sure we're on the same page. All right, bye! <laughs> All right, so uh, Magnus heads off with uh, Warrington. And uh, all you hear is Warrington's voice saying, Yes, splitting the party never fails. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. I don't like how fresh he is when he's dumb. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like this Warrington. He should be like this forever. Sass. Uh... What do the rest of you do? Uh, go get our stuff back at the Yawning Portal. Okay. That's where we left it, right? That's right. When, yeah. you, when you show up the Yawning Portal, not a heck of a lot has changed. There's more people here, and it's a little bit more gregarious than it was before. Nobody's going up and down the big hole in the middle. It's pretty quiet and um, gloomy. But uh, make perception checks to see what else you notice around you. 23. 23. 13. 13. 14. 14. 17. 17. Paulton and Diath. You can see that uh, Yagra Stonefist, the half-orc uh, Zentarm bodyguard, she's in an arm wrestling contest right now with a big burly guy, and she's, she's, she's got this pretty much locked. Uh, over by the bar chatting with Dernan is the elf, um, Davil Starsong. So those are two familiar faces that you see amid the myriad other faces that you don't recognize. Paulton, you see that the bard that you stole the loot from is still <laughs> loitering around. He's having a conversation with some halflings at a table, uh, but currently not performing. He looks very tired and weary. I still have it, right? You totally do. You did not give it back. I, I like walk in, I see him, I'm just like... Oh. <laughs> 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 yep. Uh, you left waffles in here, uh, safekeeping, still safe. Uh, you can also see Simon was left here and is still, um, is fine. 
Uh, he and Waffles don't seem any worse for wear. Did he make any friends? Who, Simon? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's made all kinds of friends. In fact, he's, he's probably like dancing on a tabletop right now, much to the <gasps> joy of uh, many onlookers. Uh, he seems Is quite... it that girl that was chasing him? Oh, uh, no, it's probably just some other folk who, who venture here, including some adventurous types, you can see, who might just be starting off their adventuring career. Uh, but they have taken a shine to the wooden boy, who they believe is just animated through some sort of artifice or magic um, and is some attraction that Dernan managed to procure. And uh, so <laughs> everybody seems on their best behavior by and large. Jared, so sorry, DF oh, notices, no, notices one other thing, and that is that the blonde fellow who came out of the water not too long ago and uh, partook in the battle at the docks, who was carted off by the authorities, is here in the yawning portal playing darts with some other guys. Oblivious no. to your arrival and seems to be having a good time. The one that was hitting on Evelyn? The one that was hitting on Evelyn. Oh, Maloon? Maloon. <laughs> Maloon is here? Yeah, he is here. He, he obviously wasn't incarcerated um, and is back in play and having, a, having time of his life. He's, got, he's throwing darts, but he's also got a mug, a tankard of ale in his hand and is just laughing and having a good old time. So I guess as the return, Dieth almost just says out loud, uh, like not even thinking about it, just being like, what's Maloon doing here? Maloon? Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> you start looking around frantically, Evelyn, for signs of uh, this. <laughs> she just squeals and runs up to him if she sees him. Oh, yeah, as soon as you, she run up to her, um, Noska points, sticks his the pointy end of his weapon into Paulton's buttocks and says, what is up with him? I don't know, man. He's bad news, though. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just become best friends? <laughs> his eyes narrow as he stares at Maloon across the bar. Maloon turns around and is like, oh, hey! Jail or something. Oh, good to see you, Eleanor. Pats you. Uh, it's <laughs> Evelyn. Oh, how's yeah, your, right. How's right. your new life oh, yeah. in the Evelyn. light of the morning, Lord, going? Oh, it's going great. Everything is so awesome. Yeah, do you just feel his blessing on you every day and your life is so changed? Would you like a beer? Uh, sure. Oh, have mine. I'll get another one. Can I, can I like, grab some darts? Yeah. You, <laughs> you go over, you snatch some out of some dwarf's hand. Mm -hmm. As he's sort of waiting his turn. I want to like try and just like aim at Maloon, just like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, make a ranged attack with a dart. <laughs> he's gone. He's making his way over to the bar right now. Uh, 13. Okay. Whoa, somebody just totally stuck me with a dart. <laughs> <laughs> I turn to the dwarf, I'm like, this is good, right? Mm. You want he's a there. shot? He holds up his crossbow. She's <laughs> <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> Paul thinks that. He's like, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, Evel Evelyn, um, he'll come over to you again with his ale. Evelyn just continues chatting him up about nothing but Lathander. She's just like 100% oh, interested in like the new believer's life. and At one you know. point, his flagon gets shot out of his hand and shatters into a thousand pieces. And this big crossbow bolt sticks in a pillar. And he's just like, whoa, did you see that? My drink exploded. <laughs> wow. That's Nosca! cool. <laughs> We're just like... <laughs> so I've got a room upstairs. That's nice. Want to check it out? I mean, is there something cool about it? <laughs> uh, it's got a really good view. Of what? <laughs> uh, Do I hear this? <laughs> <laughs> he says, uh, I'm not sure, but if we go up and look out the window, then we'll know. Can I, is he sitting like on a stool or something? No, he's just standing there. <laughs> Evelyn's like considering this. She's like wanting to be nice, but super not interested in seeing a view of water deep. Right. She's like, I mean, uh. Oh, how about this? We go for a walk. There's a beautiful fountain, like 
<laughs> Ten blocks away. Is Strix hearing this too? She's just like standing. There's so like... much noise okay. In, okay. in the place. You're not hearing the, the specific All conversation. Right. You can just see the gestures and the sort of contemplative okay. little. Uh, well, Strix is, she's like, I don't want to see this anymore. And oh, she's, is, is I could there... take it. We could go see the God Catcher. It's one of the walking statues, but they don't walk anymore. They're just really big, and people build off stuff on them now. Is it? Who oh, else is the in this? The Cemetery of the Dead. Yeah. We could go there for a picnic. I'll get some stuff from Dernan. Who else is in like is in here? All is there kinds someone? Of people. Is there someone like particularly large? Um, so uh, someone that I don't know. You don't have Warrington. Um, oh yeah, he went to the there, there are some burly types. I mean, Maloon is a big guy. If you want to go for somebody about his size, Yagra, the half orc arm wrestling champion, is a candidate. I was more thinking. Uh, uh, just like some just particularly, some yeah, some big burly rando. Yeah, um, you look up and you can see on the balcony above you uh, that there is a uh, individual who is so big that you think he might have like giant blood in his veins. He's just this big looming figure sitting at a table with a bunch of much smaller humans. Uh, I'd like to approach this fella. Okay, so you start walking up a wooden spiral staircase to the balcony to intercept him. Diath, while this is going on, yeah, uh, make another perception check. All right, great. 21. You see, uh, coming through... Uh, they were all sort of in a booth, in sort of shadowed in darkness. Uh, but as they step forth uh, and come out, they're clearly moving toward you. And you can see that it is a group of seven dwarves. And they're moving toward you with purpose. The one in the lead has a, clo a green cloak covering much of his face, certainly his eyes. Uh, but poking out, you can see his nose and his bushy beard, mm -hmm. um, which is really sort of short and stubbly. And you can see that he is walking with the aid of a stone cane, and his arm is covered with burn scars. Mm -hmm. And as he approaches you, he pulls back his hood, and his whole face is one big burn scar through which patches of beard are just starting to grow back. And you can see a cataract in filling one of his eyes, which is just sort of blackened and charred. And he says, you did this to us. Mm. Uh. Dieth is unable to respond. He is just frozen in, uh, completely paralyzed out of fear and guilt. The Strix Evelyn, see it? Evelyn turns yes. from Maloon and is like, do I have time to go on a nice walk with Maloon? <laughs> no, Strix is already running over there because she you sees see, him doing the you sad see face. You uh, surrounded by these seven dwarves. Um, and, uh, uh, Paulton, as you're, you've climbed the steps and you come over to this half giant mm -hmm. sitting at the table, and uh, he's just having a good time with some friends. Uh, yeah, let's focus on his wacky hiking for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're doing okay. Yeah. And uh, below you, you can see everything in the the level below, and that's the first time you notice that DF is has been confronted by seven dwarves, one of whom looks badly, badly burned. <sighs> I look, I look toward that, and then the potential hijinks. Just... <laughs> Evelyn is agreeing to go on the walk, if that makes any difference. Okay. She's like, okay, if Dia says I have time. Do I feel particularly suspicious or perturbed by the presence of these doors? There is something threatening about their posture. Okay. I'm sure you already see Strix flailing, like. <laughs> really, really quick, I'm going to go to this giant man. Just like super yeah. fast. Just be like, hi. Hey. Hi, how you doing? Great. 
you you seem like a real you seem like a stellar stellar awesome person is that true yeah my mother thinks so my sisters think so right on they they sound awesome hey uh so uh, are you planning to you look like you might be an adventurer do you want to go down into under mountain with us what um well let's let's put a pin on that i actually had uh I, I actually had a different thing to talk to you about really quick, but I'm very limited on time if you got a second. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I, I'm going to point at Maloon and be like, it's like, you see that guy? You see that guy uh, standing over there? Maloon Fuck War that. Dragon? Huh? Maloon War Dragon, that guy? Yeah, you know, you know him? The super famous adventurer, member of Force Gray, friend of the Black Staff, that guy? That yeah, Maloon yeah, War Dragon. that guy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know that guy too. I was just talking to him, and he was like, he he like pointed at you, and it was just like, man, that guy probably can't throw me through a window. But I mean, I don't know. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's not too bright. Yeah, but you, think- you know, he did save the city, so I guess that counts for something. I'm going to uh, <laughs> persuade him. Be like. So you're saying you can't do it? What? No. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm pretty he's sure saying, I could do it. I don't, he was saying he can't, so I don't know. I guess maybe he's right. You know, whatever. It's none of my business, I guess. He make can, a persuasion check. <laughs> yep. <laughs> actually, make it make that deception because you're lying to him, actually. Okay, okay, sure. Uh, 19. Well, I guess we'll just have to find out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh Fantastic. no! <laughs> now I'm just gonna like scurry away and try and hide. Some. Oh, also, actually, if I could, uh, just for fun, I want to play a little, a little jingle. Be like, here's a little tune to uh, give you some motivation. <laughs> inspiration. Ding, ding, yep. Ding. All right, you play it on this three-string lute. I take it. Mm-hmm. All right. Downstairs, the bard's like, I know that lute. <laughs> so as you're like, stringing, oh. as you're stringing the lute, you make eye contact with the bard at the bar, and he just looks up at you. It's like, hey, <laughs> I got it set up for you. You see him. You know that feeling l- l- when chaos is about to ensue. Right? Yeah, where everybody's mm-hmm. basically started their own little thing. Strix, yeah. what do you do as you see these dwarves? Oh, okay. You can see uh, they're all sort of pulling something out from their cloaks. Oh, God. Well, I'm back in my... I'm guessing I've already changed from my fancy outfit, like, back into my garbage. You just literally walked in the door when oh, I was Oh, okay, happened, okay. So, so I'm still wearing, dressed fancy, yeah. but there's blood all over me. Just ignore that. Yeah, um, yeah Strix will just run in front of in front of Diaz and be like, Oh, what's the, what's, what's, what's the problem here? It looks like... Uh, hi, hello. You can see, hi. of the seven dwarves, only one of them bears these horrible, horrible burn marks. And right. he says... My name is uh, Kazgrid Dragonheel. I am a survivor of the Iron Slag Inferno. Oh, oh. That was an accident. No, it was not. It was absolutely an accident. That, that was a lot. Sometimes when fire is involved, things get burned, and usually the fire is a good intention, but that's... That was an act. That was. Let me tell you, as an as an experience, you person, see they're getting madder fire. and madder <laughs> and madder. Uh, do you want to burn me, mate? Will that make you feel better and leave? You can go ahead and do it. What they're all pulling out appears <laughs> to be a stone coin, bigger than the coin you would use as currency, and they just sort of slap it. They slap them down one at a time on the bench near uh-huh. them. And you can see each of these stone coins has a different icon in the center of it, almost like a crest or some sort of emblem. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when behind you, Diath, you hear Noska say, War crown. Hammer stone. Boulder shoulder. Battle hammer. Holy shit. Sure, a walk to the fountain sounds real nice, Maloon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're walking arm in arm with Maloon, and then suddenly, Evelyn, uh, Maloon is kind of stopped when a half giant taps him on the shoulder and says, Hey, Maloon. Oh, hey, big guy. What's up? <laughs> that guy over there, 
Oh, I am, I am, I'm very hidden. <laughs> With the loot, playing the loot. <laughs> Says, well, he had some words saying that you thought that I couldn't throw you through a window. And Millen's like, oh, no, dude, you totally could throw me through a window. You could throw me through a fucking pillar. <laughs> I go invisible. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Travis, here's the kind of stuff that we get into. <laughs> cool. Yeah, isn't, is he supposed to meet us back at Yawning Portal? Yeah, eventually. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, Evelyn, at this moment, Maloon seems distracted by a half-giant who's about twice as big as he is, even though Maloon was, is quite a large man. Uh, so Hi, they seem momentarily distracted. Welcome. Hello, my name is Evelyn. Greetings in the light of our morning lord, Lathander. And at that point, you just sense, Evelyn, a tension in the air. Your paladin senses are tingling, and uh, your eye is drawn to the dwarves, who, also, are, who are slapping, is these, who are slapping these stone coins down in front of Dia. Strix is still babbling, going, you know, I don't really need to give, I mean, thank you, we are poor, if that's money, we do need money, but they don't, there's no need for these. <laughs> she kind of t like pats Moon. she's like, will you just excuse me for just one moment? Oh, yeah. Thank you. She walks over there to stand next to Strix and looks at the coins, and she's like, okay, what's going on? Noska will uh, tap you and say, those stone coins are the emblems of the seven great dwarven clans of the north. Oh, that's so nice. These are the seven great dwarven clans. It is a pleasure to meet you. Greetings in the light of our morning lord, Lathander. The, ba the fire-scarred dwarf says, for the crimes that you have inflicted upon dwarven kind. We, the seven clans of the North, demand recompense. Crimes? Us? Him. Pointing at Diaz. No. I think you have the wrong. He unleashed the fire primordial and incinerated scores of us. That, that, what, that was, what? That sounds very unbelievable. I if Dieth had done it. that, Dieth would have told us. I saw it happen. I was there. I survived. But that didn't that didn't happen. What it, do you have to say for just, yourself, you disgusting It just exploded. Uh, Speak, you coward. No. Strix, Evelyn. Enough. I confess. And I admit, I unleashed a fire primordial and I incinerated so many of you and your people and no apology will ever be enough. I, I thought I would- That's right, no apology will be enough. We don't want your apologies. Why, why would you do that? Oh, but it must have been an accident. It was an accident. It was an accident. He did it deliberately. No, he would never do that. Am I lying? He's not lying. I admit my guilt. But it was an accident. That's not guilt. That's it's it's intent. Intent is important. He released yeah. it intentionally. No, he didn't. Dia. You wouldn't do that. Tell she her. She comforts Strix. She comforts Strix. She's like, shh, shh. Strix is just like, no, no, that never happened. <laughs> Evelyn quietly just says, tell us the truth. What happened? Inside, before I could ever release the, the fire primordial to destroy the heart, destroy all of Iron Slag, I knew that I wanted to help the slaves. I knew they were there, and I thought I could get them out. But the, the cages, the locks, they were... They're massive. There's beyond youth I could do. I thought maybe the the fire would it could melt away the, the the locks and the cages and get them out, but it was it was too intense and it doesn't matter. You stood among us and you released that thing and then you ran away. Yes. I did. And now you're going to pay for it. It was an accident. He wanted to save the slaves. Nazca says, the dwarf clans have already made that decision. 
No, 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 no one's making decisions. It, it, Evelyn's going to have to sit, like sedate Strix. She's like <laughs> continually talking. She's not stopping. The seven clans, the seven greatest clans haven't agreed on anything since the end of the Silver March's War. And what did they agree on? And the burned guy says, recompense. Yes, yes, recompense. What does that mean? Divination spells cast by our clerics have revealed that you will come into possession of some treasure. We want that money. Oh, well, if you just want money, that's fine. Dear, that's fine, right? We can just give them some money. It will be service reparations to all the families that you have caused pain to by releasing that creature in the north that well, still plagues the that. north to this day. That's... That's all you seek is... That money? gold was taken from dwarven mines and it will come back to the dwarven hand. You can get it. So get it. That is the very least that I can do. I that accept. is all we want you to do. Uh, Dieth will get down onto both his knees. Um, and not exactly bow, but just kind of like lower his like posture and position down to them. Uh, and just will say, uh, I will retrieve your money. Though the coins themselves will never express the amount of sorrow I carried with me. In the and I have so many regrets and pain. And the very scars that plague you carry with me. Every time I look at myself or think of myself or even a moment alone, I've never forgotten the faces and the screams. I meant no malice. I only, I only wanted to help. You're pathetic. You don't know pain. And then he just sort of pushes past you. You see that the other dwarves haven't said much, and they're, they're just sort of head lowered, very stern, stone faced. Um, they don't seem to look at you with the same disgust. You do see some hint of pity on their face. But, but you, they strike you more like emissaries or envoys than those who have suffered directly. Gotcha. Am I like still, I'm still like up on that yeah. second floor, right? There, the, that bard has come upstairs to look around for you, but he's just sort of, you know, moving well, during, the table. During this, I was like listening, so I want, but like I was still like invisible. Yeah, it turns out most of the bar was listening at that point. It's dead yeah. silent. So like, I, I like, uh, like turn re-invisible and I like want to like try and grab Evelyn's attention I'm like hey stay he looks up and I'm like charging a thunder wave I'm like so do we not <laughs> do that? no, no. no. okay alright never mind All right. cool I also still imagine that Evelyn is covering Strix's mouth at this point just like yeah just holding her and, like, her and she's kind of like turning purple cause like she's like still <laughs> she's just kind of passing out in her arms <laughs> Yep. I also just want everyone to know across town, Warrington and Magnus have stopped for ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. I was just about to hop on that train. So, yeah, you guys are having, well, it's it's er, late winter. It's the beginning of spring, actually, in Waterdeep. It's, it's a cold, um, uh, damp day. There's still... Oh, maybe hot chocolate. But hot chocolate, definitely. Okay. And he's like, I wonder if there is a place around here where we can procure some firearms. I feel positively naked. Like, um, we should probably, okay, listen, I, I know I'm not normally the one to say this, but we should probably restore your intelligence before we arm you. My what? Okay. <laughs> You'll have to talk louder. I'm deaf in one ear. You're what? I said I'm deaf in one ear. No, I know. I heard. I was, no, never mind. Um, so I guess let's head towards the spire. Yes. The spire. Of course. And fix your brain. Right. And then we'll get weapons. Yes. And kill the mind flayer. Right. Yes. Jolly good. Have on. And uh, you um, lead them to, so not too far from the 
the Waterdeep's great market, which is just starting to bustle with activity, um, the morning turning into uh, afternoon, you see rising up among up top, above rooftops the many, many spires of the the spires of the morning, the Temple of Lathander, and the sunlight gleaming off of them warmly. And as you make your way around the buildings and enter the structure itself, you are greeted with a temple of absolute majesty and immensity beyond all expectation. Light. Magna stands in front of it and asks the passerby to do a quick sketch of him in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> right. For the gram. Yeah. Shall I wait over here or do you want me in this? Yeah, no, get in it. Of course. We'll do yes. like a whoa kind oh, of thing. <laughs> right. Yes. Pointing up at the sun. Oh, that's good. And now act like we're holding up the spire. Right. Oh, yes, we can do this. Uh, right. Uh, so afternoon wears on, um, and uh, you're handed this piece of paper with, or several pieces of paper with these charcoal sketches on them of the two of you standing before the spires of the morning. And uh, when you enter, there, it's a hive of activity. Uh, people are leaving from their morning, their dawn prayers. Uh, you can see that there are acolytes uh, uh, giving coins to uh, some poor folk who have been kind of corralled and brought before the temple. As you make your way down hallowed halls, there's all kinds, all the activity that you would expect in a place where there's just a tremendous amount of worship and traffic going on. And priests. Uh, excuse me, I'm looking for somebody to fix my friend's brain, please. It was eaten. Uh, your presence, given, given uh, just your size and all the accoutrements that you carry on you and the fact that you've got a hippo man uh, in your company, draws the attention of what you assume to be a fairly high-ranking priest, a man with uh, sort of golden yellow hair, a mustache and beard, in full priest's regalia, um, the image of the sun prominent on his, uh, on his vestments and on his stole. And as he comes over to you, he introduces himself as Father Luke Sunbright and... An appropriate name. <laughs> and uh, he says, may Amanator bless and guide you throughout the day and throughout Thank the you. night. Your, okay. fr your friend is ill, ailing of a mental sickness. Yeah, some kind of brain with legs, um, I guess. What? I'm sorry, a, what? A brain with legs? Yes, I was attacked you know, like by a some sort of walking brain creature. Yeah. You know, a brain with legs. But I, I, or I guess you could say a legs with brain. <laughs> oh, right. Jolly, oh, that's good. Brain with legs? We Either need way, weapons. This it is ate his, it ate his brain a little bit. We have to go shopping for some guns, huh? so can we get on uh, with it? Afterwards. Uh, oh. And um, I right, just I need, forgot. Yes. I just need a ritual to fix his brain. Money is no object. Oh, really? Okay, well, Amanator can absolutely tend to your needs, sir. Um, he has an acolyte come over with a wooden box where you can put a sack of coins in if you wish. The nature of, if you, after, as you explain the nature of the spell, he asks, he says, suggests maybe a greater restoration might suffice, perhaps? Yeah, I don't want a crappy one. <laughs> Just a joke. <laughs> and uh, he says, you look familiar to me, sir. Yes, I am very famous. My name is Magnus. I saved, I don't know, plain, I fought another plane to save that plane. It was like an alien plane called the Hunger, and yes. it consumed other planes, and I fought it and I killed it. Didn't you have it out um, with the drow at one time? I did, yes. Uh, Black, Black Spider. Um, yeah. I also won a couple chariot races. If you have uh, like an hour, I can run through the whole thing if you want. He says, for 500 gold, I will tend to the needs of your friend. What about for 700 gold? Even better. Okay, deal. Magnus is very bad at bartering. <laughs> well, that's a right good deal you got there, sir. Very good. Well, I'm very rich. <laughs> Indubitably. And, Between uh, the chairs and the dog training school and saving a plane, I'm doing very well for myself. Luke Sunbright says, would you like me to cast one on you as well? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, be another 700, sir. 
Okay, you drive a hard bargain. Let's just call it 15 and we'll be even. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah, so you both benefit from, the, well, actually, only one of you benefits from this. Um, uh, but yes, Warrington Munson is restored. And he says, after it's restored, I do believe we've been had, sir. Oh? Yes, I believe you overpaid for your services. Nonsense. These are decent people. Uh, they work for a church. What could they ever do wrong? No. Uh, well, yes, indeed. Well, we best be on our way. They shan't strip any more of our goods. What? Okay, I'm going to go in for a handshake uh, and... Uh, 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 you know, uh, maybe even a hug with this sunbright person, and I'm going to pick their pocket. Oh, 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 oh. oh so you're going to like swindle the stuff out of the box or just take something off of them that you didn't have before? Uh, either one. It's a 20. Okay. Uh, okay. So you basically. I've, I've trained as a rogue, and I'm very proficient. Yes. In it. So you bag this golden sun shaped holy symbol that is absolutely <laughs> encrusted with jewels. Great. Um, something that uh, the priest was carrying on him, but not openly. And you slip that away without anyone paying Sick. mind. And you think it might, it's, something about it suggests it might be magical in some small way. Anyway, you, you, you steal that without the priest's knowledge and says, Well, we'd best be headed back to our friends, Pippin, Ding Dong, Evelyn, and Strax. Well, we can look for them after we look for Paulton, Diaz, and Evelyn, and Strix. Uh, the priest says, did you say Evelyn? <gasps> no. What? Yes. Why? I know many Evelyns, but <laughs> I know only one Evelyn. And it really? Isn't, it isn't perchance Evelyn Avalona Helvig Marthane. Um, to, I'm going to roll perception to see, or maybe insight, to see how he, I think he feels about that. Uh, 18. Pal Paladin of Lathander, Lord of the Light. Um, how does he seem to feel about that it might be Evelyn? Uh, your role suggests that he is a longtime acquaintance of hers um, and was just sort of, ting, set off like, oh my God, that can't, like, it's just one of those weird, he's overcome with the coincidence of the possibility of seeing her again. It doesn't, there, you don't sense, sense any malevolence at okay. all. Okay, yeah, sounds, sounds like the same person. I mean, listen, it's a mad, 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 mad world. Who knows? We could be talking about two different Evelyn Paladins of Lathander, the Shining Light, you know, that person. Uh, but it's probably the same, right? He says, I wonder. So she has done something immense, possibly even saved the world. Oh, cool. If she is who I hope she is and you know where she is, I would very much like to see her again. Tell her, please, Father Luke Sunbright at the Spires of the Morning wishes to meet with her. Okay. If she is the evil and I know, she will want to see me again. Okay. It's possible we might be distracted as we are going off to fight a mind flayer in the sewers. If she doesn't return, point. I will be sure to relay that message to you, good sir, and your fine temple will be none deprived of the information. High five. Yes. Off we go. And off we go. Yes. Good lord. <laughs> right after he stole from the church. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I didn't roll for Warrington to see if he would have noticed this. Actually. <laughs> uh, whoops, wrong book. Oh, I have to go online for this. Anyway, uh, so where are you going after the temple? Because Warrington does have his heart rather set on getting some guns. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, let's go buy a weapon for the hippo man. Right, you go into the market where all the activity and, and the hustle and bustle is starting to kind of take over the place. Uh, as you do, two riders on griffins fly over your heads and over the market, and the riders are wearing gleaming armor. They seem to be part of the Griffin, city's griffin cavalry. And the market is a dazzle and a buzz with all sorts of activity, and as you make your way around, snooping around for anything that might interest Warrington, you are gravely disappointed, and as is he, that there is nothing really of, for his size 
and of a blasty nature. Um, mm -hmm. He was looking for something loud with gunpowder and uh, that can blow holes and very things, and there's nothing of that sort here. Well, uh, no luck, but we'll keep an eye on it well, like, as we walk back to the yawning portal uh, and, and meet up with everyone. I promise you, if we see a blunderbuss store, up. All right. Um, Warrington says, if it's all right with you, I would like to continue looking around. All right. Can you find your own way back? Yeah, probably. I mean, what, what are the odds I'll get lost or get in trouble or something? <laughs> All right, make a survival check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Gotta survive the hardest. 16. 16, you do not get lost. Yay. All right. Uh, the rest of you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. The dwarves at this point are uh, filing themselves out, and they nod to the rest of you. Um, Introducing themselves by various names and the clans to which they are associated, but they leave the stone coins behind. Oh, they do. Good. Yes. Great. Uh, after they, you depart. see, Nasca has actually picked up one of the coins and is just sort of inspecting it. Can we yeah. ask for some more details before they leave? Yeah. Like, how much money did they need? Um. So the burned one, Kazgrid, is done talking as far, as far as that one's concerned. But the other ones will say that the, the seven dwarven clans represented by those seven disks have gotten together and it, through divination spells not only were able to find where Dieth would be on a given day and so that they could actually intercept him, but also um, divined through their gods that he might come into contact with a large trove they don't know really much detail beyond that, but you get the impression they want it all. They know it's dwarven, that it's originally gold taken from dwarven mines, fashioned mm -hmm. into coins. They don't, they don't know anything more than that, other than Diath will have a hand in possibly finding some of it. Okay, that's simple enough. Whatever he finds, he gives to you. I mean, that Zia, does that seem fair to you? Yes. I think this is all just very sensible. And of course, we want to help those families, right? Yes. Devil uh, Starsong, the elf, sort of comes over to you after all of this heady business, and he says, Wow, you made enemies of an entire race of people, and you've only been here, what, a day? Can we help you in any way? Uh, Dieth will solemnly collect up the stone coins. Yeah. Uh, just kind of like look upon them you know, in his hand. Uh, what do those mean? They're dwarven house insignia, says Davil. I've seen them a few times. Why did they leave them with us? As proof that their claim is sincere, that they are emissaries of the clans involved. Uh. Uh... Dieth will just say... Well, if you need anything, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, yeah, D yeah, Dieth actually won't say anything. Like, if that, Dieth will just kind of like, not even making eye contact, we'll just kind of give him a, a kind of a quick nod, just... All right, some time passes. Things have chilled out. Enough time has passed that Magnus is able to find his way back to the awning portal. Um, there are pockets of levity around Magnus, but the table upon, around which the Waffle Crew is currently gathered, there is no levity. There is a black cloud hanging over it. Um, Strix is just bringing back food to the table. And, and <laughs> like, Waffles is basically following every step that she makes back and forth to kitchen, and oh. basically just ca getting anything that Strix accidentally drops on the floor, she scoops up and eats. 
Uh, I don't know if anyone's eaten the food or if it's just sad. I'm not sure, yeah. but she's. It's, it's probably food. good food, but it's all just arrayed in like sad faces. Um, can I? So <laughs> can I? Before I get over to the table, kind of like ask the bartender, like, so what's what ha what what what's going on? Dernan says, a bunch of dwarves showed up, gave that guy hell, blamed him for a bunch of deaths, and then left. Blamed him for a bunch of deaths. Yeah. Apparently, like reasoned? Apparently, like today? apparently he's the one who released Megara the Dawn Titan, the fire primordial that's assailing the north. Oh. <laughs> when you say it like that. <laughs> uh, so Magnus crosses to the table. That's a lot to bear on those thin shoulders. Uh, Dia. <laughs> uh -huh. I need to talk to you. Outside. Uh, DF will just rise from his seat and silently go with Magnus. Drix is going to rats after them. Okay, so the rats scuttle out. So it, does that leave just Evelyn and Paulton at the table? Yes. Or is Paulton still hiding and visible? He's pro I don't know, Paulton. Oh, I, I uninvisible. Yeah. So, so Diaz gets up and leaves with Magnus. Strix just rats away, and we're just like... <laughs> There's food! Yeah. Paulton's yeah. like, yeah. hey... Evil and Maloon's forgotten about you, at least for the moment, and is upstairs uh, uh, having drinks with the big half giant guy. They're friends now. Uh, so, DF, uh, I heard a little bit about what happened, but it seems that you were responsible for a whole lot of deaths, innocent deaths, I assume. Yeah, you heard correct. How are you doing? What? How how are you? I I uh Dieth like starts like getting really introspective at this moment because he's not really sure if this has ever been uh asked of him really before. You know, when I was a lot younger, literally from my point of view a century ago my first adventure with my friends, we fucked up. And in the end, a city full of people died. No one survived because of us. And it took me a long time to come to terms with it and even longer to understand what it meant to be okay with it. It's hard. I know that it is. Let me tell you something that I wish I had known when I was young, you don't balance the scales. You can never save enough people to feel okay with it. Every day is a new day to do good. Don't do good out of a feeling of debt or guilt. Do good because you are still alive and you can. Do it because it's the right thing to do. Part of who you are is what you did, and that will never change. And your friends love you, and they'll accept it. You are who you are. This isn't separate from this. This is a part of you. And if they love you, they'll accept you. That's what I wish I had known when I was your age. Dieth goes to speak and say something back. Uh... But rather than no words can come out of the breath, instead it just keeps getting choppy as uh, tears start streaming down his face and he literally just drops down to his hands and knees and just cries. Magnus hugs him. Yeah, and he just, just still going. Still the rats, the the rats hug both of them. <laughs> <laughs> the rats are sort of very slowly being to swarm. Yeah. <laughs> over them yeah. and just yeah. sort of cling to their their cloak. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it, it, it's it's a, it's a cry where he's not just sad. Yeah. He's literally like screaming out this sorrow that he's been holding on to for so long. Like he's literally just trying to like scream it out as much as possible. That's where we're gonna stop. Mm. <laughs> that was so good. I'm so sad. That's so beautiful. It's, so sad. So it's like pretty sad. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, so that's our show for this week, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Holy smokes. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Wait, did Magnus still have some ice cream he could potentially share with you? <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. As he hugs it, some of the ice cream in his beard yeah. sort of rubs off on your face. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, buck up, champ. Come on. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Brilliant. Uh, I'm, I'm speechless, almost. Uh, anybody have any announcements they'd like to share about cool stuff that they're up to um, before we break off for the week? I can go. Uh, I don't have misclicks tonight, but I uh, it was announced that I'm hosting Roll Twenty Con, which is a digital con for oh, Roll yeah. Twenty. Oh yeah! Oh, excellent. So, yeah, so tune in. It's on Friday and Saturday, and I'll be there between segments and opening things up and stuff, just to kind of guide you all through the action. And Roll Twenty is great, so hope to see you there. Yep. Uh, I do a a well role playing podcast our first one is the adventure zone or uh, is D&D and it's called the adventure zone and a lot of what we described tonight with the black spider and yep. the destroying of fandolin uh we are doing a graphic novel of our first <laughs> arc uh and you can pre-order it it comes out July 17th you can pre-order it at the adventure zone comic.com i've already read it ha 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 it's great. Oh, it's it awesome. It's super fun. Oh, preview comics. It, it was oh, Fandolin yeah. that you destroyed? Yeah. Legit. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. Boom. And yeah. Turn it into a big black glass <laughs> mirror. Just Fandalen. Mm, amateur. Mm. <laughs> oh, we also destroyed Goldcliff. Is that in your guys' game oh, too? Yeah, no, not yet. Okay. Um, but maybe they'll hear about it now. And well, part of Goldcliff. Yeah. We saved most of it. Uh, let's see. Um, for those who don't know, a couple of weeks ago, we announced a couple of Waterdeep products coming out. I also wanted to point out that one of our partners, Beetle and Grimm, t-shirt presently with a big dinosaur on it, uh, they've got a website called beetleandgrimms.com where they are selling uh, a Waterdeep Dragon Heist Deluxe Platinum Edition box, which is the adventure with a bunch of additional content that you can't get anywhere else, from maps to miniatures to new art to handouts to dice, all that kind of crazy stuff. But you can see the breakdown of what's in that product. Go check it out if you get a chance. It's beetleandgrims.com, and it's the Waterdeep Dragon Heist Platinum Edition box. And that will be, they're doing pre-ordering now, having it come out in November. So that's that plug. Matthew Lillard is uh, one of the people behind That's it. That's right. Bag of Nails. Yes, Bag, bag of, of Nails. nails. Mm -hmm. He's still out there in a battle balloon somewhere having the time of his life. <laughs> <laughs> Just having a jolly old That's time. That's right. So we got a bunch of partners doing a bunch of cool things, but I thought I'd kick things off with that. Uh, coming up, I will be in England for CoxCon. That's uh, July 21st and 22nd. Uh, it was near, I want to say Telford. I want to say Telford, England. So if you're from the UK at all, or England, or any of that area of Europe and want to come by to that, uh, check out CoxCon uh, for any and all information, because I'll be out there for that. Uh, in addition, uh, if you watch Acquisitions Incorporated at all, or even the C Team, uh, Dieth made an appearance on the Ac Inc. C Team last week, which is now available on YouTube, and it was a really good episode. It was. And, and I uh, recommend checking that out. Uh, in case you're wondering when that happens, like uh, timeline, timeline. timeline wise, the, that the C team episode happens in the future from where we are now at some point. So you don't have your money yet, but soon. No. Yeah. Uh, for me, I'll be at anime expo with my label, uh, give heart records. Me and the other artists are going to be doing a uh, meet and greet signing, stuff like that. And uh, as usual, Mondays are my other D and D game, Dark and Dicey. So yeah, cool. Um, I think okay. I don't know if I even had. Well, uh, I don't know when I can announce announce it, but it, it's fine. Uh, Birdcage is going to be back. Hooray! Yeah, in the Birdcage Hooray! this Thursday, right? Uh, no, it's going to be Ooh. either next Thursday or the Thursday oh, okay. after. I'm not sure Got yet, it. but okay. it will be back. Hooray! So that's coming back, and um, that's literally it. I need to sleep. I'm so tired. Yep. Please. All right. This is so sad. I want to send a special thank you. Travis, you made me laugh. You made me cry. Thank you very much. Great so having good. you on the show. Thank you, Travis. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Travis. Magnus Burnside. I don't do anything else, so I'm happy to be back with yeah. you. <laughs> Great. Magnus Burnside's the father Dieth never had. Oh, and, no! <laughs> and also, uh, I want to shout out the subreddit because there's a lot of cool stuff going on over there, a lot of cool fan art, and 
like writing and the letters that are going back and forth between Evelyn and Omen, which is really fun. Yeah, yeah. Thea likes it. All right. So, Evelyn, or Anna, do you think I should uh, maybe spam that link? Yep, I do. I do think you should. Uh. <laughs> Feels so good. So uh, as so, lots of things hanging out there. We'll see where the adventures go next week. Uh, tune in. I have no idea what's going to happen, but it's going to be great. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll be back next week with another episode of Dice Camera Action. Until then, take care of each other, and we'll see you then. Bye, y'all. Bye.